What's up you guys, Josh Tongle here. Today, I wanna to talk about the power of your subconscious mind and how you can use it to bring in more wealth, health, and happiness into your life, the Joseph Murphy way. Because once you understand how the mind actually works, then by the end of this, you'll have the key to accessing unlimited possibilities. And this is based on none other than the classic book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. You see, according to Joseph Murphy, the problem is that a lot of people are trying to change their circumstances by trying to change the external conditions. But here's the thing. No matter how hard you try, it ain't going to happen. Why? Because the problem is the cause, not the effect. And what's the cause? It's not because you're unlucky or that the world's out to get you, but it's because of your thoughts. It's because of your thoughts. It's like this. Every thought is a cause and every condition is an effect. You change your thoughts, you change your circumstances. The formula is simple. You think good stuff, good stuff follows. You think bad stuff, negative stuff follows. So what many spiritual teachers have said in the past is true. You are what you think about all day long. And if that's the case, then I think it's a pretty good idea to figure out how you're going to take charge of your thoughts if you don't like what's going on in your life right now. So how do you do that? Murphy starts it off by explaining it this way. You have only one mind, okay? But your mind, you got to get this, possesses two distinctive characteristics. There are two levels to it. There's what's called your conscious mind, and there's also something called your subconscious mind. Think of it as like two spheres of activity within one mind. Your conscious mind, he says, is the rational mind, the reasoning mind. It's the one that chooses. For example, you choose what school you're going to go to, what TV show you're going to watch, who you're going to marry, and so on. Your subconscious mind, however, is a subjective, irrational mind. It's a seat of your emotions. It doesn't reason things out the way your conscious mind does, but that doesn't mean it's not important though. In fact, your subconscious mind works 24-7. How so? By orchestrating all of your bodily functions without you consciously choosing, from pumping blood to digesting food and even breathing. I mean, imagine waking up every morning and having to say, hello there, heart. Do you mind beating rhythmically today? <laughs> or imagine always having to remind yourself when to breathe. Dude, I'm pretty sure we'd be dead by now. You know what I'm saying? So here's how they work together. Your conscious mind thinks, right? But the main point he's trying to get across is this. Whatever you think habitually, he says, whatever you claim mentally and feel as true, listen closely, sinks down into your subconscious mind. It accepts whatever is oppressed upon it or what you consciously believe. It doesn't argue back with you. And once it accepts an idea, whether it's good or bad or true or false, it doesn't even matter. It begins to execute it straight up. You'll experience it in your reality. To illustrate this, Murphy says to think of your mind as like a garden. You're the gardener and all day long you're planting seeds, aka your thoughts, in your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the soil. And like I said, it accepts any kind of seed you plant, good or bad. So whatever you sow in your subconscious mind, don't be surprised with what you reap in your body and in your environment. Again, if you think good and positive thoughts throughout the day, good and positive things will follow, like peace of mind, perfect health, success, and prosperity, because your habitual thoughts are harmonious and constructive. On the other hand, if you constantly think negative and destructive thoughts throughout the day, well then, negative things will follow, plain and simple. Things like failure, frustration, and unhappiness. As within, so without cause and effect. Or look at it this way. He says to think of your conscious mind as like a captain navigating a ship. And what does a captain do? The captain directs the ship and gives orders to the people in the engine room. Thing is though, they don't even know where the heck they're going. They just automatically obey and follow orders. So if the captain gives the wrong instructions, then they'll end up in a bad spot, like the rocks or whatever. Likewise, your conscious mind is a captain and the master of your ship. The ship being all the things that are happening in your life right now. And like the people in the engine room, your subconscious mind takes the orders you give it based upon what your conscious mind believes and accepts as true. For instance, he talks about this one opera singer named Caruso who seemed to have understood this, where there was this one time when he had stage fright that was so bad that his throat became paralyzed due to spasms caused by the intense fear he was having. And he was sweating like crazy and was ashamed he was about to go on stage and he said, they'll laugh at me. I can't sing. And in front of everyone behind the stage, he shouted saying, the little me wants to strangle the big me within. And by the big me, he meant the limitless power and wisdom of his subconscious mind. Now check this out. He said to the little me, get out of here. The big me wants to sing through me. 
get out, get out, the big me is going to sing. And guess what? His subconscious mind responded, Murphy says, and released the vital forces within him. And then he walked out on stage singing gloriously and majestically, captivating the audience. Dope stuff. See, that's the kind of power you have, you guys. You can speak with a deep sense of authority and conviction to the irrational emotions that are generated within your deeper self. For real, tell it to be still and quiet. Let it know that you're in control and that it's got to obey you, and it will. Seriously, you can test it out. That's why it's called the subjective mind. It's subject to the conscious mind. Is this making sense? And that's why you want to watch out what you say and choose your words wisely on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? Murphy encourages you to never repeatedly say things like, I can't afford it, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. Don't forget, your subconscious mind won't argue with you. It takes you at your word. So if you persistently say that you can't buy or do such and such, then your subconscious will pick it up and follow your order and see to it that you will never have the money or the ability to do whatever it is you want to do. Look, even if you don't have the cash on the spot for something, still, don't say it. He says to select a better thought like, I'll buy it. I accept it in my mind. Accept it mentally, you guys. And I've done this many times when I wanted something, but I didn't have the cash for it, where I'd be like, that's mine. I'd accept it. I'd feel it. And then somehow, some way, money, quote unquote, randomly showed up for me to get it. And of course, it wasn't random, but it showed up in unexpected ways. The rule of thumb is this. Murphy says that you never want to finish a negative statement. So if you start saying something negative, then catch yourself and reverse it immediately. Then watch. Eventually, good stuff will happen. That wouldn't have happened if you kept saying negative things. Or another example he gives. What if you say, I don't like mushrooms? And surprise, surprise, <laughs> there comes a day when you're served mushrooms in sauces or in salads. You know what's going to happen? You're going to get indigestion because your subconscious mind says to you, the boss, your conscious mind, doesn't like mushrooms, right? Think about it. Why would you expect your body to feel good if you keep saying you don't like or you can't eat something? And I could really relate to this because back in the early 2000s, I struggled a lot with something called GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's a chronic digestive disease and it was bad, you guys, no joke. Even at the hospital, they told me that I had an extreme form of it. And I remember when, to all you Neville Goddard fans out there, I remember when, at the time, I literally had chest pain strong heartburn, and this disgusting taste of vomit in my throat every single day. And all these books I read and people I spoke to in the medical field said I couldn't eat this or that, pretty much all the food that I love. And I accepted it. So whenever I'd be out with friends or family to eat out somewhere, I'd get all nervous because I kept telling myself that I couldn't eat certain foods. So whenever I did, I'd experience all those negative effects. Long story short, as many of you know, and if you don't, you can check out my healing story on my channel. Once I flipped the script, and I reprogrammed my subconscious mind. Everything completely changed. Everything. So I can testify that this really works, you guys. This ain't just theory to me. There's power in suggestion more than people realize. But let me be clear. That doesn't mean that someone can control you with suggestions against your will, okay? Let me explain. Murphy's aware that different people will react in different ways to the same suggestion because of their subconscious conditioning or belief. For example, you go up to someone and say, hey, you okay? You're looking kind of sick. I think you should lie down. Now, depending on their conditioning or belief, they'll either suddenly turn pale because your suggestion associates itself with the person's indwelling fear of getting sick, or they'll just laugh at you and be like, whatever, dude, I'm good. Where your suggestion will fall on deaf ears and get rejected because it's associated in the person's mind with their immunity from it. They're convinced that they're not going to get sick. It doesn't phase them because of their self-confidence. In other words, a suggestion has no power in and of itself. It can't impose something on the subconscious mind against the will of the conscious mind. Remember, it has to be accepted mentally. That's what it comes down to. Okay, I definitely don't want to leave out one of the wildest stories I've ever heard Joseph Murphy share regarding the power of suggestion. And it's the one that was told to him by someone named Dr. Evelyn Fleet. And it's about an article that appeared in the English newspapers. Here's what happened. Some guy gave to his subconscious mind a suggestion for over a period of about two years that went like this. I would give my right arm to see my daughter cured. I would give my right arm to see my daughter cured. You see, his daughter had a crippling form of arthritis and a so-called incurable form of skin disease. And unfortunately, medical treatment wasn't working and the father had an intense longing, notice a strong emotion, for his daughter's healing. 
and one day the family was out driving. Can you see where this is going? And they crashed right into another car, and the father's right arm, you ready for this one, was immediately torn off at the shoulder. But check this out, at the same time the father's arm was torn off, get this, the daughter's arthritis and skin condition vanished. It vanished. Lesson, if you say something enough times, coupled with emotions, it allows for the suggestion to sink into your subconscious mind, then bam, it becomes your reality. All right, real talk now. I'm sure that all of us, including you, at some point in our lives have heard suggestions like, you can't do that. You're not good enough. You're going to fail. You're so stupid. You ain't going to amount to anything. Life's hard. Money's hard to make. You're too young. You're too old. You'll never find love. You can't trust anyone. You're going to get the virus. And the list goes on and on and on. And yo, some of you just hearing these things, it's actually starting to hit you, right? You feel it. Because for some of you, these statements are true. Why? Because you accepted it. You accepted it. You believed it to be true. Therefore, limiting you from reaching your full potential. But I've got some good news for you. It doesn't have to be true for you anymore. It doesn't have to be true for you anymore. How? By reprogramming your subconscious mind by the use of constructive auto-suggestion. So here's what you do. From this day forward, only affirm positive suggestions. It'll recondition your mind to help counteract all those destructive ideas. Because here's the thing, if you don't do anything about them, then you're going to be stuck with whatever screwed up patterns and habits that have been making your life difficult. Remember to follow this rule of thumb. If you start saying a negative statement, then catch yourself and reverse it immediately. Never finish it. Start saying things like, I can more often. Reprogram yourself. State more positive things. Don't say things like, my memory is bad or my eyesight and hearing is getting worse because I'm old. Say, my memory and my sight and hearing is getting better and better every single day. Speak life, for goodness sake. Speak love and prosperity and blessings into your life. And as those positive impressions are received in your subconscious, you'll start noticing some improvements. Trust me, Murphy says that peace of mind and a healthy body are inevitable when you begin to think and feel in the right way. Folks, whatever you need, the treasure house, as he likes to say, is already within you. Infinite wisdom, infinite power, and infinite supply. It all lies within the depths of your subconscious. So whenever you're faced with a problem, expect a solution. And give thanks knowing that it's going to show up at just the right time. Again, Murphy says that you are the captain of your soul and the master of your fate. You have the capacity to choose. Believe in the power of your subconscious to help heal and inspire and strengthen you. Because you get what you believe. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor, like and share it. Or if you're listening via podcast, I'd really appreciate a review. It gets more people to discover my work and, of course, help spread this message. And I'd love to hear your experiences or questions in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button or the bell right next to it to be notified of my next video. I pump these out every single week so you don't want to miss them. And don't forget to register for my free online training where I dive deeper into how you can start manifesting the life you really want right now. So check it out. The link's in the description. Like I always say, more's coming. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.